Hi, I'm Sean Spazito, and welcome to the first annual Passcode Cup. I'm with the Christian Science Monitor's cybersecurity publication, Passcode, and with me, I have Dan Manson from Cal Poly Pomona. Great to be here, Sean. <laughs> um, for the past several months, uh, we've been working specifically on this Capture the Flag competition. And since the mid-90s, uh, games like this have really helped students and professionals develop. Right, Dan? You are so right. You know, in the early 90s, Jeff Moss, a.k.a. Doc Tangent, Dark Tangent yeah. created the first real hacker conference, DEF CON. Uh -huh. It brought the community of hackers together, and after a couple of years, they really wanted to play. So they created the first Capture the Flag competition. It's exploded since then. Okay. And and so, I mean, give me an idea about how the game's played today versus right. how it was kind of played in the, in the past. In, in the past, at DEF CON, right, that original hacking conference, folks right. usually just played in person. Oh, yeah. They were playing face-to-face. -face. They were playing for fun. They were playing for bragging rights. You know, a few years later, others wanted to jump in and so we had different variations of it we had the C, uh, CSX the um, competition started by the military academy sure. of cyber defense yeah, exercises yeah, yeah. this is West Point this was the Naval Academy uh, Air Force Academy and then the colleges jumped in with the collegiate cyber defense competition and then companies started to do their own capture the flag competitions MITRE CTF cons jumped in with different ones. So we have an international game now with Capture the Flag. Okay. And and so did, let, let's talk a little bit about the game. Let's How, how is the game played? How is sure. it scored? So, you know, there's the old-fashioned physical game where you're out in the field and you're trying to capture a physical flag. Yeah, the one that when we played when we were kids. Yeah, so now, now we've got the digital version where we have these digital flags in the um, cyber um, space, the, the networks that they have access to. So they have a closed network. First of all, they don't do anything on the public internet in a capture the flag. This is a safe, controlled play, playing uh, well, yeah, place to play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So kind of like a little sandbox. Right, but what they do is amazing in this. They have advanced challenges that mimic cyber attacks in the real world. So the binary exploitation, the reverse engineering attacks, the crypto attacks. You know, they also have quiz and Jeopardy questions. That sure, they have to answer. sure. But it can go the gamut from something for middle school and high school kids all the way up to professional. They can also bring their own tools, so and they can create their own tools. We have kids here today that have created hacking tools just to play CTFs. Okay, I mean that's really neat. So how how is this particular competition? I mean we're doing something a little bit different. There's a physical representation. Oh yeah. Of like a water treatment facility. I know yeah. your students. Oh yeah. Spent well, well, a lot of time on. We have a couple of students from Cal Poly today who play in these competitions, and they really wanted to take it to the next level. So behind us, we have a mock-up of a physical water treatment plant, because in today's world, a cyber attack can lead to an attack on critical infrastructure. And that's what we're, we have in the background today. If certain things happen in the capture of the flag, it's going to affect the physical infrastructure behind us. Yeah. So so today, I think we have something like 13 teams playing and several right. dozen players. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the, the uh, Pwn Pilots, oh, yeah. Tang Lan, They're, with some folks from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Yeah, we have some great names. Carnegie Mellon is, is kind of the, the uh, top U.S. U.S. school that plays in Capture the Flag. In fact, they play internationally. They play at DEF CON. They won DEF CON this year. So Carnegie Mellon is the team to beat today. You wanna, I, was, I was talking to the Carnegie Mellon folks a little bit earlier, and um, they said you know, they didn't know necessarily how to react to this particular game. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, every all the challenges change from game to game. Right. right? So, so you never kind of know what you're getting. But most time, like uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, Capture the Flag competitions are 24 hours or longer. Oh, yeah. This yeah. one is only this is a four, four hour, hour game today yeah. so these teams are playing playing with a fire hose today. Exactly. They get more learning out of these four hours than any class they take. And they prep more for this competition than any class. Absolutely. And and so and, and I think it's really important to mention that we're playing today with Facebook's CTF platform that they open source. Yes. I think uh, early this year or last. Right. So Facebook's been wor working on its own capture the flag environment. It's a cool environment. It's got a nice GUI interface, map of the world. It's like the old board game of risk. Instead of capturing a country the old fashioned way, you capture it by solving the challenge and different point values for each country. And, and I know uh, some Uber engineers oh, yeah. like, actually helped us actually build these challenges. Yeah, so we really have a lot of support today from Uber who has taken this game to a new level. Absolutely. Well, 
Dan, thanks so much. I think you're going to join us a little bit late, uh, a little bit later, right Thank in the you, afternoon. Sean. Yeah, look forward to and, uh, the rest and, of the and day. I, I think uh, uh, Susan Wilson from Northrop Grumman is going to come join us. All right? Great. Thank you, Thank Sean. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, brother.